Jack them up, boys. Father God, your word tells us that you honor the praises of your people. Your word tells us, Father God, where two or more are gathered together, you will be there. I hope and pray every person in this room, Father God, can sense your presence today. Father God, we thank you for a country that we can come and serve you and praise you. We thank you, Father God, for the people that guard and protect this land. We pray for peace, Father God, your peace that falls on them, that knows, Father God, that they are serving you. We pray, Father God, that, that the people in our armed forces, Father, know that the battle is really between good and evil, and that the victory is in you, Lord. That your love sustains us, Father God, and sustains the people that defend this country. No matter what goes on, Father God, in the world, we know that your light shines brightest when it seems the darkest, that you're in control, that your word says in them last days there will be tremendous turmoil. But that is not the end. That is not the end. That is the beginning, O oh Lord. And we thank you for your word that you shed upon us. We give you glory and honor, Father God, in all that you do. We thank you for what you do through us. And that your confidence has been bestowed in us to give us confidence in ourselves. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. I'd like to welcome any newcomers that might be here today. And uh, I don't know about you all, but praise and worship was awesome this morning. I just didn't want to stop. I just didn't want to stop. I felt the presence of God like I haven't for a while. Again, <laughs> Lord, it's uh, the title of the message this morning that I have is so. So you have believed. We're all here because we believed. Believed something. We believe something's going to happen. We believe. Sometimes our, the world can try to get in the way of that. And uh, it's not real hard for us, for us to let that happen. The word tells us to uh, basically that, uh, you know, God shows us all through this that he has the answer for every situation. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? You know, <laughs> I'm standing there thinking during praise and worship, you know. You put the word in, you put the word in, you put the word in, you come with a plan. But when you humble yourself, you don't know what he's going to do. But you have to be prepared, you know. So I, it's not fear. I call it anxious. How's he going to use me today, you know? What is going to come out of me today that he has put in? I mean, we put a plan down, but we don't always know whether it's his plan or not. We believe it is. But he can always change his plan. And it might be for just one person that shows up in here. Because it tells us 
as Bud and I were talking about earlier, that when one person comes to the Lord, all the angels in heaven rejoice. Now, Pastor Gloria was sharing last Sunday about how many angels, you know. I hadn't thought about this till he just now gave this to me. What she shared was how when the great I am in the Garden of Gethsemane said, they said, where's Jesus of Nazareth? Or we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am. And down fell the legion. You know, it comes to my mind that, uh, well, let me, something goes along with that. Our words paint a picture. God's word paint pictures. So, we know that the worlds were formed by his word. So did he say, let there be light. Or did he say, let there be light? Did he say, let's create man in my image, or our image? Or did he say, let's, let's create man in our image? <laughs> what picture was painted in your mind of the God of love? Did he beller it out? You better do it my way. No. What picture is in your mind of God? Did you ever see a, I'll just say a butterfly or something that was caught and uh, you wanted to help it, whether it's a bug, an ant, I don't care what it is. But it's so small when you go to pick it up, it's fragile in your hands. I say, my God is mighty. And when that legion of men went down on the ground because Jesus said, I am, how did he lay them down? Did he knock them cold? Or did they just gently get laid down because of the great I am? What's the picture in your mind? You know? What is the picture that you have in your mind of this God that created this universe for someone to love him and he picked us? This was not my message. <laughs> but it is what he's shown me this morning. How do you picture him? How do you picture him? The God of love. The great I am, who has all our answers for us, and all we have to do is love him. Seek him. Seek, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be given to you. Do you believe that? Do you believe he wants to give you everything that there is? Because, see, we have the world interfering all the time. Even in school they teach us certain things that through education and stuff that just don't make sense in the spirit. You know what I mean? Gloria and I was talking about on the way out here today about when should we go to the doctor? Do we sometimes just rush to the doctor? Now this is only the question you can ask yourself rather than going to the Lord. Because, see, he took it all to the cross. He took it all. And I'm not saying one way or the other. That's not, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. But where's our confidence? Is it in the Lord? He says, my sheep know my voice. Who do we pay attention to? CNN, Fox, it don't make any difference because the world is all around us and it all, most all, comes against what the Word says. So when do we go to the Lord? <clears throat> After everything else fails? 
I did initially to when that happened. <clears throat> but when I stay in the Word today, it reminds me that the answers are all right there for my situation. Because, see, he tells us that there is not anything that the devil can lay on us that is not common to man. So, if that's true, it's already happened before. There's, he's created a way out. Most of the time we can find it in here. Probably every time. You know. So that means if there's already been a way out, our God has already provided the answer before the problem is bestowed on us. Right? Thank you much. It's already happened. He showed us. He loves us. Now this, whether it was the deep voice or the soft, gentle voice, can you picture him speaking it all in existence and knowing you because he's the Alpha and Omega before he ever started it? Can you see how important that you are? Because, see, the world wants to show us that we're not. It really does. We're trivial. But God says you're all important. And if all the angels, which Gloria come up with the figure, which is not the total amount, but multiplying 185,000 times 72,000, means that 13,320,000, 320 million angels, which is not all of them, rejoice. When one person comes to the Lord. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, can you picture now, since that was said, that that many angels and more rejoiced at you coming to the Lord. That that's how important you are. Can you picture that? That's awesome. That's the God we serve. That's the God that loved us before we loved him. That's the God that loved us before we loved him. We have to have that picture of how important we are to God because of what he wants to do, not us. When we lay our lives down, you know, it's fear. When it, I, anymore when I see fear, it just jumps out at me. Fear has no place in me. And the greatest fear that there is is death. Most of the time, most people, whatever, you know, I believe. When there is no fear of death, what's the devil got on you? Jesus said, I give my life. Once I decide to give my life, what is there? What is it? The world teaches us to protect it, you know, and I'm not saying not to protect our lives. But once I, what I'm saying is Jesus, when he hung on the cross, the devil didn't kill Jesus. He said, it is finished. I'm out of here, had enough. That's my paraphrase. So when we decide in our own minds that there's nothing going to happen until Jesus wants to take us home to be with him, what's the devil got on you? Absolutely nothing. 
Now, having said all of that, we'll walk out of here today and guess what tries to keep seeping in slowly? You know what I mean? Slowly, by everywhere we go, everywhere we turn, the news. How many know where they came from? I know where I come from. And I know there's no future back there. But what's the word give me? The word gives me hope, gives me promises, tells me I got a seat at the table. What worries do I have? Any of us that are getting older know that this life is so short. You know, and I really am not as important in the world as I used to think I was. There, the world is not going to miss John Patton. You know. But when I humble myself, when we humble ourselves, we can see the Father. And we can see him all around us. See, I see him all around me this morning. I see it. You know. We come here on Sunday mornings like I said, it's not my job to convince anybody here of anything. My job is to convey his love, his compassion. And that's from a person that wasn't very compassionate. We discussed that in Bible study yesterday. How do you change? You know, if we're over here, and I was in the world, and there was many times I tried to do different, which I didn't know at the time was change. But how do you do that without something to help you? How do you change something into something else? There was only one way that I ever changed, and it was right here. And a lot of it had to do with my chain was I quit doing what I used to do. And you know, sometimes that's really hard because we don't know what else to do. But God provides a way out. Through the watering of his word, he says. And then after you do that, then he says, when we wash ourselves, then he tells us that rivers, you know, my shower, I'll just say, washes me off or rinses me off. But he tells us when we'll do that with his word, then rivers will flow out of us. Isn't that amazing? That's my God. That's my God. That's the God that I serve today. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Matthew thirteen forty four. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, And the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, that which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. He revealed to me that this is God. And the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth for joy, and there goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. When God found a 
a person, a man, a woman. He guarded and protected it. And then he hung on the cross and he gave all. He gave everything that he had to buy that man back. Many men. But it's saying here, man. He went to that cross for one man, for the love of one man to love him back, because he loved man that much. Again, verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant, merchant man seeking godly per, goodly pearls. My center column tells me that the word goodly means beautiful, so beautiful pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. One pearl, one man. When he found it, he'd have still hung on the cross for you or me or the one. That's how important we are. God calls us to tre a treasure before he bought the field. He called us a treasure before he bought the world. When he went to the cross, he bought us back. That's how important we are to him. <clears throat> Four things will give us his kind of confidence. Go to Hebrews 10.35. The verse says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Where's our reward at? Our reward's in heaven. I want to go to Matthew 5, 12. You don't need to turn there. I just... It says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. First half of the verse. So the second half says, so the prophets which were before you, they persecuted the prophets which were before you. But you know, it says in the Bible that the prophets seen our day and rejoiced. The prophets seen our day and rejoiced. I wonder what they thought way back then in the you know, in the donkey days, I guess you might say. <laughs> See, in our day, and they rejoiced. Knowing that the glory was going to fall. Hallelujah. 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 Great is your reward, it tells us. Great is our reward. What are we worried about? Great is our reward. First John, what, the first one of the four things is prayer. Go to John 3, 21. I'm sorry, 1 John 3, 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. 
How do we keep our heart from condemning us? We need to read the Word. We need to stay in His Word. He says, my sheep know my voice. We need to stay in His presence. Verse 22 said, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing to his, in his sight. Do we always do what's pleasing in his sight? I'm sure we don't. Then the reason I say that, I'm not trying to speak for you, is because Jesus said all are sinners. So... I'll take his word for it. But he leaves us a way out. Repent if you miss the mark. It's not real deep. That's my loving, caring God. That's our loving, caring God. Repent. And then believe when you've repented that you're forgiven because he said so. Not what your mind says, not what the world says. I don't care what you did before. Believe when you repent that you're as white as snow like he says. Washing with the water of the word. Knowing who we are in him. He's not that squeaky little voice to me and he's not that big thundering voice. Not that he can't be. But he's that gentle, compassionate voice that understands my weaknesses, our weaknesses, who has compassion enough, compassion enough to go to the cross and die for you and me. That we might spend eternity with him. Eternity! Imagine that. Oh boy. What fear is there if we know where we're going? Do you know where you're going? I know where I'm going. I know where I've been and I know where I'm going. I agree. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do I deserve it? Absolutely not. But I did what Jesus said. I believe his word. I believe his word. And this is his commandment, verse 23, that we should believe on the name of Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. Is it always easy to love one another? <laughs> it is when we put it in perspective. And my perspective is this. God's love for us is he wants to meet our needs. And if I can meet somebody's needs, I like to do that. Not for me, for him. Even though there is a reward that goes along with it. But when I, I also remind myself, when I see others do something or say something or whatever, I remind myself, if they only knew what I knew, they wouldn't do what they're doing. That's not putting me up here. It's trying to put it in perspective. And I have to remind myself of that constantly. You know. I just do. And that, that works for me. Whatever might work for you. In other words, it's, you know, give him a chance or, or whatever. It don't make any difference. He tells us to love one another as he loved us. That's, that's the thing. And however we can come about doing, that's what we need to do. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Have you been given the Spirit? Who give us the Spirit? His abideth in us 
by the Spirit which he hath given us. He gave us his Spirit. That's what the Word tells us. Let's go to 1 John 2.28. That's just over a page. And he says, And now, little children, abide in him, and when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. How are we not ashamed before his coming? When we've done something, when we've missed the mark, we repent and believe that we're forgiven. That's not real deep. We have to remind ourselves. Even though I say, I'm sorry, Lord, when I hear that voice say, no, you're not, he don't forgive you, whatever. No, what's the word say? The word says, I'm forgiven. Amen. Amen. And if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of God. Amen. Now, when you've repented, are you righteous? Or did you lose your righteousness? Who gave you your righteousness? Amen. It comes from God. So who is to tell you you're not righteous? Shut the devil off. Shut the devil off. Go to 1 John 4, 19, or 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love of God hath toward us, that God hath toward us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It tells us that we have to have love in our hearts. We have to care in our hearts. And guess what happens when that happens? He dwells in us. And he tells us, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Boldness, confidence. If we don't have the boldness and the confidence in, in what he says that we have and we need, we're not going to do what he says to do. Because our mind will say, is that really God? Is that really God? Do you really want me to do that? <clears throat> Guess what we do? We talk ourselves right out of what he wants us to do. And what is that? Is that fear? Is that fear? I'm on Okay, Lord. You know the, the thing where the, uh, the person was given ten talents and another one five talents or two, whatever, it doesn't make any difference, and the one talent. The Lord showed me a long time ago that with, instead of talents in, in my picture of this, it was your God-given talents. And, uh, you know, we know about the, the ones that were doubled. And, uh, but we had the one that took his talent, his God-given talent, and buried it. And God showed me, when it comes to making, missing the mark, I'll call it, that he hid the talent that God gave him so that nothing was done. He didn't do nothing for fear. And God showed me that even when we make a mistake, 
he can correct it and get the glory. But if you hide your talent and you do nothing, God can do nothing. Do you, do you see that picture? God can do nothing. Even, so he would rather that you make a mistake stepping out in faith because he will still get the glory. But if you don't do nothing, nothing happens. Nothing happens. And you have to realize that the talent that you've been given, whatever it might be, comes from God. It comes from God. And, at the, and the next thing is the confidence and the boldness to know that he gave it to you for you to use. Because once again, if it don't get used, nothing happens. Nothing. He entrusted you with that talent. He entrusted me with mine. Amen. Confidence and boldness. How can we do that? We have to know who we are. We have to know who we are in God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now let's go to John 7, 37. Hmm? Yes, John, yes. John, John. Sorry. It was mentioned in the Bible study yesterday about in that last day. Wasn't it, Harvey? In that last day. The great day of the feast. The last day, the great day of the feast. Jesus stood and cried out, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Hallelujah. Let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, do you believe? I believe with all my heart. Who he believeth on me and the scripture that has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And belly in my center column says heart. So out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his heart shall flow rivers of love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to B, fellowship. 1 John 1, 3, right back over there. 1 John. Hallelujah. That which we have seen and heard declare... I'm going to back up, back up, back up. I'm just going to go to verse 1. That which was in the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we've seen it. Hallelujah. You know we're going to see it? We're going to see it. Hallelujah. We're going to see the manifested life of Jesus. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, was manifested in who? Are we in us? Hallelujah. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. Truly our fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you 
that your joy may be full, that your confidence may be full. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, does what? All sin. All sin. Does that give you confidence? He said it. Confidence, boldness to do that which we're supposed to do. And each and every one of us have a different daily assignment. Let's walk in love. Hallelujah. Fellowship with God. Go to James 2. Whoa. Whoa. James 2, 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was, made, was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled as saith, Abraham believed God. That was the first scripture when I was searching for God of what I had to do or whatever in my confused state, that it began with Abraham believed God. And I remember when John believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Where does your righteousness come from? Very simple. We believe God and we're righteous. Not too deep. Even I can understand that. Hallelujah. And what did he call him? He called him a friend of God. Hallelujah. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of the Almighty that said, Light be. That's awesome. That's awesome. I am a friend of the mighty God that parted the sea with a staff. What if Moses hadn't done what he was told to do? I'm a friend of the mighty God that put a cloud over the Jews or Israel in the desert and a flaming light by night. I'm a friend of the God that fed him manna every day. And quail till their bellies got over full. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am a friend of God. We are a friend of God. Does that give you confidence in knowing who you are? Because, see, he's talking about each and every one of us that believe God. You see how then that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also was Rahab the harlot justified by works. When she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. For the, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. I'll just point out 
It didn't make any difference what her trade was, does it? Didn't make any difference what her past was, does it? God used her. We have to take them faith steps with the confidence and the boldness that he's the one that's directing us and leading us because we have fellowship with the Father. He is our friend. Isaiah 41, 8. But thou Israel art my servant Jacob, who I have whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Are we the seed of Abraham? Do we know who we are? Okay. Whom I have chosen. Did you choose him or did he choose you? Boldness and confidence. He had faith in us that he chose us. Hallelujah. Jesus said we could be his friends if we did what, if we did what he commands us. Let's go to John 15:7. It says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that your joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full, that your confidence might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. We better know his voice. Henceforth I call you not servants, for a servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. He calls us his friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And then once again, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give you. Let's go to 1 John 4, and I'll finish with this. This scripture was one that I was taught early, early on. 1 John 5, I'm sorry. How we overcome the world and all that's around us that wants to deter us from what God would have us do. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. I am born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begot loveth him 
also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. They're not burdensome. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth Jesus is the Son of God? Hallelujah. 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 Father God, I thank you today for this time of fellowship. I thank you for the opportunity to share your word, to share your love, to share your confidence and your boldness that you have in us, that we might do as you would have us do, that we might be as what you would have us be. Strengthen us, O Lord. Give us the strength, for we know your word says that when we are weak, you are strong, that you prevail, Father God, when we fall short. Our trust and our faith are in that, Lord, because we love you. We thank you, Father God, for all that you do, and we thank you more and more and more as your eternity becomes alive in us, that we shall not fret to say, here am I. Have your way, Father. Do your will in my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As you've watched today, you've had the opportunity to hear the word preached. And as you apply that word, you'll get victory in your life. But it has to start someplace. It has to start first with a commitment to Jesus Christ as making him your Savior and then making him the Lord of your life. Paul said this in Romans 10 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, the word of faith that Paul preached is found in the next verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with a heart one believes unto righteousness. So it goes like this. All you have to do is actually say, Jesus is my Savior and he is my Lord. So I'm going to invite you to say this with me this morning. Uh, and if you want to bow your head, you can bow your head. The Bible says that pray watching, and so it's okay to keep your eyes open and, and watch. But let's say this together. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I confess those sins today. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of those sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And I commit today that I will make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for salvation today. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that today for the first time, no matter what time of the day or night it is, uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now from this day on, make him the Lord of your life. And as you make him the Lord of your life, you will find out what God can do in you and through you. Also, if you've watched this broadcast, we want you to know that you can become a partner with this ministry. As you become a partner with this ministry, some of the things that you've seen throughout this uh, presentation... Uh, the buck outs and, and things like that, then you become a part of that kind of ministry. And there's many people that come to know Jesus. We have offices in Nigeria and Togo, have four churches in Nigeria, one in, in Togo. And uh, we want you to know that you become a part of each and everything that this ministry does when you become a partner. You can see the information right there on your screen so that you're able to become a covenant partner with us. And as you do, we want you to know that we pray over each and every one of your offerings. 
so that God will multiply it back to your hands according to his word. His word says in Luke 6, 38, that he gives back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to make room for more. The New Living Translation says whatever measure you use in giving large or small, it'll be used to measure what is given back to you. So we want you to know that God loves you, He'll take care of you, and He'll multiply the seed that you sow in this ground with this ministry. Remember that Jesus is Lord, and Jesus loves you, and so do we.